Welcome to B&B RV. We're going to do a walk around on the outside of one of our rental units today. This happens to be our 32 foot Class C with bunks. All these units are set up very similarly, so this will help you on the outside. What we'll do is we'll come, we'll check the front, make sure all your windshield's good, and check for any blemishes and mark down any blemishes on the unit you're taking out. Uh, there's going to be a few storage compartments. There's a storage there and a storage there. Your door is going to have a latch that holds it open. This little latch holds your door open right here. And you want to be aware that when you're getting in and out of your door, this screen comes loose from your door. So you don't want to hang on to these pieces here because they'll just come apart and your door will go flying open. When it flies open, it's going to hit this and put a hole in it. So you just want to be careful of that. And always use this piece as the handle that you hold on to. There's a lock for your handle and a lock for your deadbolt here. On your keychain, there's also there's a key for your engine. There's a little silver key that unlocks all of your storage compartments. There's a key with a round black head on it for your door handle and a square key that looks more like a house key for your deadbolt. So you can unlock all of this from the outside as well. Inside, when you uh, first step in, there's one big round switch right there. That's a battery disconnect used just for storing the unit. You want to make sure that's on all the time. So if you have somebody that's curious and turns that off, nothing in here is going to work. So be sure that's on all the time. You also have a light switch for a light here on the outside and a light switch for a light directly inside so it helps you get in and out. The awning button is labeled awning and it says in and out. So you just push down and your awning is electric awning and it will automatically just open up. And you can open it all the way out and when it stops, just stop. And you can also just push the in button, it will go all the way back in. When it gets in, hit the stop button. We upgrade those electric awnings because they're nicer to use, but also they'll hold themselves shut in a high wind so you don't have to worry about anything out on the road. Um, if you have electricity, which we're going to get to on the other side, but if you have electricity hooked up, there is an outlet here on your patio side if you had something you wanted to plug in. There's another storage area. This is the back of a furnace, so any place that says warning, there's a hot area. If you're using a furnace, that'll be hot. That's just your fridge vent. Nothing that you need to do with any of those. This one has more storage here and more storage here. This back storage unit actually goes all the way through, which we'll see on the other side. So that if you have fishing poles, skis, something like that, you'll have room for it. We put a ladder on the back because we want to get on the top every time this unit comes back in on a rental, so we inspect the roof. But don't get on the roof. It's not a patio. It's not a place to hang out. If you have to get up there in an emergency, be very careful because it's very slippery when it's wet. The bumper is designed so that it'll hold your dump hose. This is how you're going to dump your waste tanks. You have two waste tanks, a black tank, which is your toilet, and a gray tank, which is your sinks and shower. So you bring this hose out of the storage. It has a cap on it, just like this bayonet right here. You take the cap off. You put this bayonet on. And you put your hose down in the drain wherever you're at. And there's two valves, one here and one here. These are just slide valves that you just pull straight out. This particular one on the left is your black tank and on the right is your gray tank. You can always tell if you forget because a black tank will have a, a larger pipe than the gray tank. Pull your black tank first and let that black tank drain out all the way and close it. Then pull your gray tank, that soapy water from your sinks and shower, that'll rinse it out a little bit. And uh, when that's all done, close your gray tank, remove your hose, and you bring your hose back here to your bumper again, where it's stored, and we put it right here in the bumper. Then you want to make sure that you get your uh, cap back on your drain. I usually put that on before I put the hose in the bumper so I don't forget. In this compartment here, we'll have some of the other items that are included with your rental. These little latches right here hold this door open for you so you don't have to hold it up. You 
you've got your four camp chairs that we include. You have a water hose that has the pressure regulator and a cable for cable TV. We include some gloves if you want to use those in the dump process. And we have these blocks. So there's going to be a set of two blocks that as you can see have three steps each. The refrigerator has to be level to operate. So when you park, you're most likely going to be in a level spot at a campground, but if you're not, whatever's low, your front's going to be low, the back, one side, <clears throat> whatever's low, take the block, put it under the wheel, right in front of the wheel, and just drive up on it one or two or three in some cases, but one or two typically does it. And there's a level inside that we'll show you when we go through the inside that helps you uh, know when you're level. Just want to make sure that you are reasonably level for that fridge. And so uh, that's actually very easy to do and the easiest way to get you level at a campsite. The rest of that's just storage for any of the things that you might want. And again, all these storage units have the round little silver key that unlocks all of the storage units. We have uh, regular unleaded gas here. Two places to hook up to water. You can hook up water right here and fill your onboard tank. So this will not give you pressurized water, but it will fill your tank on board when it's full. It runs out underneath in the middle there so you know it's full. But there's also gauges inside so you can keep track of where you're at. If you're at a campground and you want to hook up for just pressurized water, hook up here where it says city water, you hook this up to your campground spigot and that gives you pressurized water the entire time. This will not fill your onboard water. To fill your onboard, you have to go here. So that's the two connections for your water. If you're somewhere where you're going to hook up to cable TV, that's your hookup connection right there. And your electric is here. Right inside, there's an outlet. That is the outlet for your generator. So your cord is plugged into that outlet for generator power. And when you get to the campground, take your cord, plug it into the campground outlet, and you'll have electricity from the campground. So the two ways to get electricity is the campground or the generator. Electricity is needed for microwave, air conditioner, and outlets. So if you're running your air conditioner and you want to run your microwave, they suggest that you shut that air off before you run the microwave so that it doesn't trip a breaker. When you leave your campground, unplug your cord, and don't just put it back here in the storage compartment. When you put it back in, make sure that you plug it back into that outlet for the generator inside so that if you start the generator during your trip you'll have power. If you forget to uh, plug it in, start that generator, you won't get any power. So your power for your generator is right there. This is just the back of a water heater. Your exhaust for your generator. Your generator is located right here. There is one breaker on the face of that generator. If you forget and you overload that, you may need to come out and do that breaker, but that's rare. As long as you remember not to run that air conditioner and microwave at the same time. Be aware of that exhaust pipe can get hot. we got another storage area here. We have this slide out, out right now, but it's more accessible with the slide in. But use the storage here. Your propane is here. The propane is not a self-serve, so you'll just go to a campground, truck stop, etc. They'll fill that for you. Uh, it's full now. In the summer, typically you're not going to need to fill that, but there's a gauge in there. You can keep track of your propane as well. And uh, that's our outside of this 32-foot Class C. We'll take you inside and show you that.